Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Supernova Workshop. My name is Andrew, and I work at Definity as a Developer Relations Engineer. As per usual, let me just say that this session is being recorded and it will be available on Definity's YouTube channel. Um, today, we have one of our own, Karsten Jakobsen. Karsten is a Senior Developer Relations Engineer at Definity, and he will be talking about uploading images to the internet computer, a very important tool to have in your toolbox if you plan to develop on the IC. And just a last message to our audience, uh, please don't be shy and ask questions to Karsten in the Q&A section. Uh, and if you're on, watching this on YouTube later, uh, please leave comments and ask questions in, in the YouTube comment section, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Without further ado, Karsten, please take it away. Thank you. So usually I really enjoy to do live coding, but uh, a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of code that is involved in, in uploading images and, and serving it back as uh, HTTP requests. So, so what I'm doing today is that I'm going to uh, introduce some concepts that we use to, to create this upload and serving the images, and then show how that looks like in code. So instead of coding line for line, I'll introduce the concepts and show you how it, it looks like in, in code. I'm using Motogo today, but uh, you could use Rust or any other um, language you prefer, uh, as, as, long as, uh, as long as it can run in a canister as a WASM, you should be good. I'm not going to introduce uh, how, to install our, uh, how to install our SDKs or, or how to deploy locally. Uh, we cover that in, in, in some of the other uh, workshops we've done. So if, if you're not sure how to set up your environment or if you're not sure how to, to deploy your first uh, dApp on, on the IC, I, I highly recommend going to, uh, for you to go to, uh, to one of our previous workshops and, and get that information there. So maybe some of what I'm saying today is, is, uh, is, is new to you or you're not unfamiliar with it, but we have a lot of workshops that covers the more, the more um, basic uh, things of working with the IC. I'll start sharing my screen now. And as the title says, uh, this workshop is about how to upload and serve images using chunking. And um, go to the next. And there's a reason why chunking is, is, a, is a part of the title. And that is that a canister, we can only uh, upload messages to a canister that's uh, two megabytes or less. So, if you're going to upload a larger file, it could be an image, it could be, could be a video, it could be content that takes up more space than two megabytes, then you need to chunk it up and send it piece by piece. If we start to look at how we upload, uh, how we upload the image, this shows like the rough high level uh, architecture. On the front end, on the left side, we, we chunk up the file and then we commit the, the, the chunks uh, that we upload. I'm going to show you how, how this looks like in code. Let's see. So before diving into the code, um, this, this is a, this is a pretty basic uh, Motogo project. Uh, if you're familiar with Motogo and, and the IC, you can see we have here the DFX files. This is where I've defined my canisters. In this case, we have a, we have a backend canister and we have a front end canister. So pretty basic. If we go to the, if we go to the, the front end canister, we have, we have a, an HTML file that just has some basic uh, HTML components. We have an input and we have a button. You can actually try to go and see how that looks like. Let's see, on the screen. I'm going to be shifting a little bit about, around here. So this is, this is actually what we're going to end up with. Maybe a little bit bigger. So we have, 
we have an option to choose a file and we can upload it. So that's what we see here. This is the HTML file that generates this page. I have a question related. It's, it's a, a bit of an edge case, so it might not be that interesting, but what happens if you start uploading the chunks and that, then your internet connection cuts off in the middle? Would the canister store the, the first few chunks that you uploaded or would it just delete all of them? Ooh. Yeah, so, so, we, so um, that's a good question. That really depends on, on the logic, how you implement it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to, in the front end, split the file in chunks and then upload them one by one. So if you get that interrupted, then you need to have some logic on, on, your, on your front end that can, that can handle that. Um, so, so we're actually going to, to see how that looks like. Uh, but, but this is the end result. This is what we want to end up with. And the, the HTML file is pretty basic. Uh, we have the input to pick a file and we have a button to upload the file. We can actually try it because it's running. Um, so let me just choose a file. I have a file here. I took, I was in the office and uh, I took a, a picture of our logo on our wall. Thought it was pretty cool. It was, it was uh, the first time I went there since the reopening. And you, as you can see here, it's 4.3 megabyte. So this file is more than twice the size of what we can upload to a canister. So in this case, we would need to we would need to chunk it. So let's say open, and we upload. Here, I would prefer to have some kind of spinner or something that indicates that something is in progress. But this is just a simple example, so I'm not I have not implemented that. Okay, so now the the image has been uploaded, and we're serving on on the website. Let's take a look at what happens when, when I uh, choose the file. So we go to the, the index file here. And here, if we go to, to the bottom, um, I, have a, I have an event listener that uh, detects when, when, the, when the input has changed. And I just assign, assign the file to a variable here. This is very basic HTML. It's, there's nothing specific about this uh, related to the IC. And then I hook up the bottom, bottom, uh, button to another event listener so we can start the upload pro progress. So when I start, when I click the upload button, let me make this bigger. We, we hit this function. And what we do here is very basic. We check if there is a file. And if there is a file, we start to, we start to split it up in chunks. I have here chosen to do chunks in 1.5 megabytes. It could be closer to two megabytes. It could be less. Um, this, as long as this is less than two megabytes, we're good. So I slice the file. And then what I do here is that I take each chunk we have, and then I actually send it to my backend. So what I do here is that I, I actually already at this point start to push the chunks to the backend. Oops. And when I'm all done, when all these uh, chunks have been, been uh, uploaded, then I send a commit and saying to my backend, now I'm done, all the chunks that I had, has been been sent, and now you can you can close this. And this is uh, this is my file. This is what I want to store. Wait, so isn't isn't the chunks variable a a very an array on the front end? So you have chunks that push, and wouldn't chunks be a, a variable stored on the front end? Yeah, an array. Yeah, it is. So how does that line upload the chunks already? Uh, I'm not sure if I... Maybe you just push it into an array and then you upload the array afterwards. Um, let's see. 
or if my question doesn't make sense, you can just go on. <laughs> Let's see. So this is where, so, so, uh, so let's, yeah. Um, so we, so, so this, yeah, um, we are, so, um, yeah, so, so we upload the chunks. And then when we are done uploading the chunks, we are we are committing the the batch with the IDs. So what I think I think I know what you're asking. Um, what we're doing here with the chunks is that we are collecting IDs. So for every uh, so for every every time we upload a chunk to the backend, it returns an ID that identifies this chunk. So we can map all the chunks that we upload to one specific to one file. So, so this is what is happening here that we upload the chunks, we get, we get a, an ID back, and this is the IDs we are interested in because when we, when we commit the, 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 the chunk batch, we want to provide all the IDs that are related to this specific upload. So, so I, I don't know if that answers your question, but yes. the reason yeah. we're doing a push here is that we want that list of, of um, IDs, so we can associate the right, the right uh, chunks to this specific file. When we go to the backend, um, I think maybe maybe it'll make more sense because we 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 just have one big variable that holds all the chunks that we're uploading. So there could be multiple uh, uploads going on at the same time, or uh, from maybe different parts of the application. So so we want a way to identify. The, the, the actual upload we're doing right now, and we, will, we want that to be identifiable for the backend and say, okay, these chunks in this variable, take those with those IDs and then put that into a file variable. So I, I, I hope I answered your question. But yeah, that, that makes sense, the that makes sense. Is, the whole idea is to be able to, to tie these chunks together to, to, to one file upload. Um, okay. We have the first question from the audience. Is the yeah. code available online or is it going to be? It, it will be. Uh, it, uh, I made some changes here earlier today, so it has not been pushed yet, but it will be available later today at, uh, at the github.com uh, slash definity slash examples. So oh, nice. our channel repo will have this later today. So you can, can try it out yourself. Awesome. Okay. so. Uh, so what we've done so far is that we we picked a, a, a file from for, uh, from uh, the input uh, uh, control. We took the file, chunked it up, sent each chunk to the backend, got the IDs from the backend for each chunk, and and commit the whole batch of chunks uh, and say now we completed. We have sent all the we sent all the the chunks. And these are the IDs for the chunks. So when you're going to put it together in the backend, these are the IDs you need to look for. So that is that is the first part. Uh, if we go back to the presentation here. So basically, what we've done now is we sent we created the chunks, send it to the backend, and when we've done uh, send all the chunks we send a commit and say, now we're done. So let's, let's, uh, let's take a look at how that looks from, from the backend side. So here I go to my, my main Motoko file. And if you look here, create chunk is what we are calling from, from the front end. And just show that again. And we do the upload chunk here. So what we're doing is we're calling the create chunk uh, function in the backend, which we have we have imported the, the interface for our backend uh, in, in this first line. So we have all the fun functions, the, all the public functions available to the front end uh, through the candidate interface. 
So, so we're calling this create chunk every time we upload uh, a chunk. So let's see how that looks like. So this is a very simple function because all it does is it's actually just taking the chunk which is sent, which we also can see if we go to the, oops, if we go back to the, the file here, you see we, uh, we upload the files as byte arrays. So we save the, the data as a byte array. Let's see if we go back. And we are saving it to a variable called chunks which we have defined up here, which just is, uh, it's just a, a hash map where we save the chunks. If we go back again. So we restore the chunk with the ID and the chunk uh, by the array data. And then we return the next, um, we, we return the, the, the next uh, chunk ID to the front end. So it knows what to assign, what ID to assign to the next chunk. So this, this one is pretty simple. The next, the next part was that we are going to commit when we are done chunking the data and sending the data, we wanna commit and say, now we're done. So let's go and look at how that looks like in the backend. So here we have the commit batch, and um, and and uh, if you go back to the front end, and take a look at it. Here we go. So we we are providing a few a few information besides besides the the, the chunk data. We we are with the commit batch. We are providing a batch name. This is just the file name. Um, and we are providing the content type. So these are things that the content, the content type is the file type, the PNG or uh, JPEG or whatever file we, we choose. And the batch name is just a way to identify the, the, the file uh, when, when we wanna look it up later. So it makes sense to use the, the file name here because what we eventually wanna do we go back to the front end. When we want to load this image, we want to be it easily identifiable. If I open this as a new in a new tab, you can see that by naming it, it's easier to call it. So this is actually the the, the batch name. We call it the the file name, so it's easier to find and load it again later. Okay. So let's go to the Matoka file again. So what we do here is, is actually just, um, we are just putting these chunks into an assets um, variable. And if we go up and look here towards the top, we've defined the hash map with um, the, the hash map called assets. And if we, if we go and look at, at the types, let's see, asset, we have the encoding type and the, the content type, and we save data, uh, like when it's modified, uh, the array of, the, of, um, of chunks, the total length, and certified is not something we, we use in this case, but it's something uh, we can do too if we want to certify it. So let's go go down. I can't find it again. There we go. So we so we put in um, this this uh, this file or the chunks in in the assets uh, variable. And we name it. In this case, I use assets and and the, the the batch name, which is the file name, which is what makes it easy for us to later call it here. So it's just to to, to make an easy way to to find the files. As as you can see here, 
it, the file is actually stored in a variable. We are not doing a physical upload where we store the file on, on, the, uh, on the canister as a, as a raw file. If we look at the asset folder, there's no, there's no uh, SF office uh, the, the JPEG image. The file is not, not like if you, if, you, if you upload it to a server, it's not physically on the server or in the canister, it's saved in a variable. So that's, that's one very different, one way that, that uploading to a canister is very different. Uh, save the file in, in, a, in a variable instead of, um, saving it as, as, a, as a raw file. And as, as mentioned, we, we save uh, just some metadata uh, that can be useful in, in different applications. So, so now we have uploaded the files uh, with the chunks and we have taken all the chunks and, and added it to the to a, a single a single input in the in the assets variable in the hash map so now we have the file in this hash map called assets or we have the data from the file including the metadata in the in the hash map and that's actually what we need to be able to serve it back to the website again if we go back go back to the Presentation here. The next step now we have the now we have the image in our assets um, variable. We want to be able to serve it back again to the website, so we can we can show it here on the website, or we can call it from anywhere in our DAP. This is a little bit more complicated, but it's not too complicated. Um, what we want to do is we want to make a request from the website. And I can show you how that looks like on the front end. It's very basic here, just to just to make sure that we're not we're not just uh, uploading a, a a bunch of photos to to the same page. But there's just some basic logic to just if I upload a new file, just remove the file we already shown and and show the new one. So this, this is very basic HTML uh, and, and JavaScript, but we are actually calling, we're actually calling the, the, the image uh, URL or assigning it to the source. So this, this acts like if we had a, a, a server, a regular traditional web, uh, web server where we have the, the image uh, located as a, as, a, as a file on a disk, so to the front end, there's really no difference if I was pulling this image from, from, from a web server or if I'm pull, pulling that from a canister, it acts the same way. And the reason we can do that is that we support HTTP requests uh, made to a canister. Just go a little bit in details for that. So in Motoko um, and in Rust, we, we do have uh, the, uh, the, the capability of receiving HTTP requests. And in this case, it's very useful because we, we, we want the front end to react like we are used to. Uh, it's, it's, uh, in this case, it's HTML and JavaScript. We want to be able to just uh, reference uh, an, an image like we used to and, and serve that as it was actually physically on a, a, a disk that we are just pulling it from. So. In this case, we use HTTP request to request the image. And at the moment, we only support get requests. Uh, we do not support post requests. Uh, you can say that could have probably been easier to, to just post the, the image to, to the canister, but we're not currently support, uh, supporting that. But we do support get requests, and, and that's, that's a good option in this, in this case. Um, so we check if the method sent from the browser is actually a get request. And if it's not, we just discard it. We just, uh, we just ignore it. And what we want to return, because the front end is expecting to get, to get a response like if we, if we were using a web server. So we return the body, headers, status code, and, 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 uh, and, and, and other, and, and other uh, information that, 
you can provide to a regular HTTP request. So seen from the front end, when we do this HTTP request, the response is just like if we were calling a, a traditional web server. Since we have the limit of two megabytes, we do need to take into consideration that we may need to chunk up uh, or send the response in chunks. And we also have a method for that. Uh, we have something called streaming strategy that you can append to, to the HTTP response, which takes care of, of the chunking. I'm going, into the, uh, I'm, I'm going to show the code how this actually works and how this is implemented in this example. But I think this is, this is where things gets a little bit more complicated. And um, we actually have, uh, I think we have, uh, we have good documentation about that. If you go to our documentation website, uh, if you go to the, the internet computer interface specification, uh, then, then we actually cover these things, uh, like HTTP requests. So we cover how, how this works, the, the, what you can do, the limitations, and we also have um, a section that, let's see, streaming. So is this streaming for larger files or what's the difference between this and what you showed before? So the streaming is actually just a way to send the response, uh, uh, larger responses. Uh, but it, it, I, I, in this case, I don't make any, uh, if, if we have a small file, we still go through the, the, the streaming um, strategy. We use the same, we treat all, all requests, we, we treat the same. So even if, if it's not necessary to chunk it, it'll just be one chunk, uh, <clears throat> sorry. So, so we, we actually don't make a distinction between if it's a large file or it's a small file, we treat it the same way. We, we use the, the streaming um, strategy for for making sure that that we are able to send the, the full um, content uh, to the to the browser, um, if you know for sure that you're never going to exceed the two megabytes, then you you can say maybe it's not necessary to use the streaming st strategy. But if you have a website where where it's users who are providing the the uh, or if you have a dab where it's the users who are providing the content. You may not know what the what the the users are providing. You can set up some some rules in your HTML. Say we only allow files smaller than a certain size, but I think you should in general be able to to take whatever the the, the user provides and then handle it on, on on your end. So so the streaming strategy, I would I would apply that anyway, uh, just to make sure that whatever the the user has uploaded, uh, we can serve back again. Can I upload a movie, like a one gigabyte movie? Yeah, we can do that as well. We, yeah, the if we get into really if we get into really big files, we have another we we, we encounter another issue because the space in a canister is limited, um, is currently limited to eight gigabytes. So let's say that you upload a ton of movies, a ton of one gigabyte movies, then you would have to spread your your movies to multiple canisters. But the way we are serving it back is really the same. It's there's no difference. Uh, it's just it, it we use the same the same method to to send the the content back to the to the browser. So if this is a fifteen kilobyte JPEG or if it's a gigabyte movie, uh, we don't really make a distinction here. We just treat it the same and 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 let the streaming strategy chunk it if if necessary. Okay, so let's take a look at how that looks like in code. Okay, so. So, so here we see the HTTP request. And this, this, is, uh, this, is, this is where the request is received that we sent from the front end when we make the call, let's go back here. So here, when I wanna serve this image, this, uh, this, this uh, request we, we are doing in our HTML and our JavaScript to get this file, 
is received by this function. And what I do here is that, that I, I take the, the URL, if you go back to the, the image here. Um, so I, I take this part because I know that I have saved the image that I uploaded uh, in this format. So I go and look it up and find it, and find the, the image in or the data in my assets um, variable. And then I, because I want to, I want to add it to my response. I want to send it as a response back to the browser, the image. I add um, here the, the first chunk plus headers, a status code saying that it's successful, and then the streaming strategy. This is where we add and say to the, the HTTP request that there might be more coming. So let's, uh, let's uh, create a strategy and, and, and make it possible to send multiple chunks. What is actually happening when we, when we uh, use the streaming strategy is that we, we send the, 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 the chunks to our HTTP gateway, and when it's all complete, it just sends it off. So this, this is very much something that happens internally uh, on the internet computer. The create strategy, we'll go and find that one. This is where we set up, we set up the, the strategy um, where we, we just define, um, we define how the strategy is, is set up, what canister is, is calling, um, and who the user is. In this case, we just it's just a backend service, so it's uh, we we don't have an external caller for for the strategy. And then we set up the the callback because um, we we want to send chunks until it's all done. It might be one or it might be be multiple, but we want to create a, a callback function that will do that for us. They'll just keep sending the chunks until we, we have gone through all of them. So, so this strategy has implemented a callback function that will be called until we have sent all the chunks. If we look at the, the callback function here, it, um, what, we, what we are looking, uh, let's see. We are, we are sending we are we are creating a token and and this is this is similar to when we were uh, when we were chunking the files on on the on the front end where we wanted to associate the the, the chunks with IDs um, the, the 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 streaming strategy used a token and this token does create a, a token is created for every for every chunk we are, we are going to send um, to the HTTP gateway. And, and this, this streaming uh, callback is just called every time we send a new chunk. Um, the, the tokens are managed automatically. We just need to create the token. And then, then, uh, then, then when we, we send it to the HTTP gateway, it will, it will um, figure out that this token belongs to this, to this uh, request. So we don't have to think uh, much about that. Uh, the token here is created uh, where I use um, the key. Um, the key is, is the, the file name in this case. Uh, the index is the, num the, the chunk number. So the first time it's, it's uh, zero, and then one and two and so on. And then if we, and, and then we can add some, some content encoding. Um, so, so what we're doing now is that we, we created a strategy can we take a question from the audience? Yeah. So does it take each chunk two seconds to save to the canister? And I assume the two second comes from the fact that the yeah. update calls take one that, to two seconds? That is actually a really good question. Uh, yes, it will, it will take, um, let's see, let's go to the top and find the, Oh, it was at the bottom. Or would you be able to upload uh, in parallel? Uh. Yeah, that, there's there's no reason why we couldn't do it, why we couldn't do it in parallel. But but yeah, it is it is a uh, um, yeah it, 
it is an update function, so we it would take uh, a couple of seconds. Yeah, but yeah, good question, uh, relevant question, and and yeah, if if you if you can implement some logic on your on your front end that can do it in parallel, that would be so much faster. So front end yeah. and back end, right? Um, so when when it's back end, uh, we we are just reading data and sending it. Uh, we are not updating the data, so we 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 don't we don't have we don't have that time consumption. So so serving the the data back again will be quicker, be much quicker than than the, than than storing it on the IC. Right. And, Those are query calls. Okay, so so what we did now was that we had the HTTP request, and we defined the the, the body, the headers, status code, and the streaming strategy. The streaming strategy, uh, we we add, we created a callback function, so it can run until we've gone through all the all the chunks of data, and um, and we have defined the 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 the, the token that we need. Um, so, so basically, this this is this is what's needed to to serve the file back again. And and as I said, this is just reading um, the the HTTP request here is requesting the URL. It looks it up and finds the asset and it chunks it. So it's not physically on the server on a server. Uh, it's the the file is stored as content in in a hash map. Okay, um, let's see. Let's go back to the presentation here. Okay, so I think we covered that. If we just go back to this overview again, it, it just it describes the same. We send a request from, from the website. We send it as HTTP, like we were sending it to any web server. Uh, the HTTP request is received in the canister. Uh, we we uh, we prepare the response and add a strategy that will keep calling a, a callback function until we are we have gone through all the chunks and then um, we we use a token to keep track of which chunks we are we are we are sending uh, that belongs to to this this request. So this is this is a this is a kind of a simple. Simple uh, implementation of of um, uploading a file to the canister, storing it in a hash map, and then being able to to serve it back to the um, to to the front end as um, like directly from a URL that specifies the, the 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 file. So from the front end, the front end has no idea that this that the file is not it's not on a disk somewhere. It, the response is acting just like you're used to. If you use a regular web server, it, for, for the front end, there's, there's really no difference, which we can also see by, by looking at how we are assigning the, the, the image to, to, to the image um, control in the front end. So let's go back we can try it one more time. And actually, this time I want to add. Let's see. I have added a little bit of, let's see, um, logging. So if we take the same file again, this one is 4.3 megabytes, and we upload it. We can see here it's it created three chunks. And every chunk has an ID, and then we see the image here. Now, if we want to try the same with the small, this is uh, another image. Here we can see this is only 431 kilobytes. So, so this this should only this should be able to be sent in one chunk. So, so let's try that. And it was. There was only one chunk created that was sent, and the same uh, in the same way though. But but we only needed this this one chunk. So, so yeah, this uh, this shows this shows an example of how you can do uploading from 
from a front end, from a HTML or JavaScript or any uh, front end framework, how you can uh, upload it to the canister and how you can serve it back using the HTTP request that makes the canister act as a web server uh, for serving content like like images. So, so this is uh, this is what I what I have for uh, for this um, for for this uh, little walkthrough. As I said, the code will be available later today. Um, I made some changes uh, earlier in the morning, so I haven't committed it to the to the examples repo yet, uh, which I will do. Um, and I will let's see. I'll just fill the screen with this. So I will. I would say a good, good place to go to get more information about this. I have introduced some concepts like a, the HTTP requests, or streaming uh, strategies. All these things are, are, are really well described on our website, on our documentation website, on smartcontracts.org. Um, it is a little bit different than if, if you come from Web2 and how, how you usually upload uh, files to a server and it's physically on a disk. Um, it is a little bit a different concept, but but as you can see, it 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 uh, seen from a front end. There's there's uh, you can serve uh, images uh, just as as if it was on a on a disk. Um, I recommend going to the forum. We have a forum where thousands of developers who are happy to help you if you run into problems. Uh, I'm sure someone has encountered the same problem before, and if not, we we uh, we from our team, from from Andrew and I's team, we we are on there on a regular basis. We check it out. Uh, throughout the day to see if someone needs help. So very helpful place to be. We have we have a, we we are active on Discord as well. If you look up Definity Dev Official, that's that's where we we hang out on on Discord and we actually do office hours there. Uh, during Supernova, we do office hours on on Tuesdays uh, and, and Thursdays at eight thirty uh, a.m. Pacific. And you're welcome to join, even if you just want to listen in and see what, what other people are working on for Supernova or if you have questions. And, and uh, the Discord uh, server is also a great place to ask questions. We have a huge community who's, who's happy to help out. And then last, um, the github.com. Oh, that was uh, that's an error. I want to fix that. We get some live coding as well. Yes. This is the live coding for today. <laughs> uh, go go check out this uh, this repo. There's a ton of examples for both uh, Rust and for Motogo. I showed I showed an example in Motogo today, but it could also be done in Rust. Uh, so go and and take a look at some of the examples. Uh, and this is where I will upload this uh, this code um, today, so you can go and find it and and try it out yourself. Um, the the example it has everything you need. You can just uh, clone it and, and and run it on on your local system, um, and also if if you if you want to, you can deploy it to the mainnet and, and try it out on the mainnet. But it's it's uh, it, it works the same way. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I have uh, anything else to add to this. I hope it was useful to get a little bit of an introduction to how to work with files. It's something that I think a lot of dApps really need uh, if you have some kind of user input. If users uh, can upload their profile, or they can upload, let's say it's, uh, if, you, if you are working on something NFT related, maybe you need to upload an image. So, so yeah, it's, it's something that can be useful. And um, yeah, I hope, I hope this, this uh, put a little bit of light on how, how you can do it on, on the IC. Awesome. It was very informative and uh, a lot of fun. So thank you very much for, for Carson for the nice presentation. And uh, as you said, we'll have the code available. And thanks for, for the last slide and pointing everyone to the right, uh, the right places. Thank you very much for the people who joined in live. And we'll see you tomorrow on the Twitter spaces with IC Gallery and ICP Maximalist. And on Friday, we have another workshop. And uh, thank you also to all the people that joined us on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, there were a lot of uh, movement and there were also people interested in actually starting developing on the IC. So thank you, Karsten. <laughs> you sparked a lot of interest. Nice. Awesome. Great. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank Cheers. you. Bye.